what's up guys? So I have been doing a lot of custom built-ins lately and I've been doing a lot of work with plywood. And plywood has these ugly edges that you have to cover up. I know some people like to show it off and sometimes that does look good, but in most cases for me it doesn't and I need to cover it up. So I have been using this iron-on edge banding and um, I've gotten pretty good at it. It's not that difficult. I know some people struggle with it and have it coming off, but I have come up with a pretty good system to iron it on as well as trimming it that probably requires tools that you already have. So in case you guys don't know what iron-on edge banding is, is a piece of thin wood veneer that has a glue on the back. And when you heat it up with an iron, that glue melts and sticks to your edge of your plywood. So the first thing I have to do is make sure that the edge of your plywood is nice and smooth. You just can't take it right off your table saw and apply edge banding to it. It's kind of rough. So the smoother the surface, the better that it's going to stick and the better success you'll have. I like to use this sanding block that has these hook and loop pads that you can put on. And I'm just using a 120 grit sandpaper. Now I should mention, I don't recommend that you use an oscillating sander. They're hard to control and you could rock the edge and end up changing that profile of that edge. And you want it to stay pretty flat. So I find I have more control over this than with this. And after you sand it, it's important to make sure you get that dust off. I just like to use a rag, it's quick and easy. And then you need to trim your edge banding down to length. And I like to keep it about a half inch long on each end. And I like to just use a pair of scissors to trim that. Now we're ready to apply the edge banding and you need to go grab your mom's iron and set it to the cotton setting. That seems to be the temperature that works well. And you're gonna need a block of wood. This block of wood is gonna be used to apply pressure to the edge banding to get a good adhesion to the edge of the plywood. And I like this block of wood to be about an inch wide and roughly six inches long, it's not that important. But the reason I do that is because I find it's a lot easier to get the pressure where you want it. If you have a block of wood that's say like three or four inches wide, it can rock on that edge and not give you pressure where you want it. It's just, it's just a lot easier and you have way more control with a piece of wood that's this small. So stretch out your tape, and this one's a little bit wonky, but that's okay. So lay out your tape on the edge of the plywood and get it roughly centered on that edge so you have about the same amount of overhang on both edges. And take your iron and just put firm pressure and slowly move it along that edge. Now this first pass with the iron is just going to get it stuck so it's in place. Make sure that your iron is nice and flat. And I like to just move this iron very slowly back and forth a few times. And when I get to the ends, I'll tip it down just to make sure that that edge of that board gets lots of glue and it's adhered. And then you want to be pretty quick with this. But grab that block of wood, put firm pressure, and push down. Next, we need to trim down the edge banding, and there's a few different ways to do it. And the first one is, I'm going to show you how to use this little jig that you can buy at your hardware store. It's fairly inexpensive. I think it's probably under 10 bucks. And it does an okay job. You have to be very careful with this one, though, because if you tip with it, the wrong direction, you can actually take off too much edge banding or even gouge your finish material. So here's a little close up of what that tool looks like. It has a sharp blade in it that is reversible for when it gets dull. And on the back side, it has this little V shape and it's a guide that just runs along the side of the edge of the plywood and it shaves it off kind of like a hand plane. Start at the end, put firm pressure on there and just start shaving. And you can see that did an okay job. It's a little bit proud. It doesn't get it quite right, but you can fix that quickly with a bit of sandpaper. Another way to trim the edge banding is to use an Ulfa knife. Now this is a pretty advanced way to trim edge banding. It's, uh, it requires a bit of skill because you can easily slip with the knife and end up gouging your piece of wood. So I don't really recommend using this, but it does work. 
And um, I've had some good luck with th doing it this way, but it is a risky way. My favorite way to trim edge banding is to use a router with an eighth inch roundover bit in it. The reason I like to use a roundover bit is because you're killing two birds with one stone. You're trimming the edge banding and you're giving it a slight roundover all at the same time. If you're gonna use a router, it's important to make sure that your piece is secure and won't tip over on you. I'm just using this Irwin Quick Grip. You can put it in a vise, which is probably a better way to do it, but I don't have my vise set up right now. I'm in between workbenches. Now this is why it's my favorite way to do it. It's nicely rounded over and it's super smooth and there's no lip. And to trim that little end off, I just like to go back to the Ulfa knife and uh, just kind of cut it like in a sawing motion, but pushing forward with it. You don't want to pull this way because you can get some tear out. And that's how you apply iron on edge banding. If you have a better way to do this, I'd love to hear it. So leave it down in the comments below. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're new to my channel, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you never miss when I upload a new video. And like always, we'll see you in the next one.